Let's watch Numidia's video. Seven classic TBC tips that will save you a lot of time. Let's play. Three, two, one, okay. TBC is an expansion filled with content and things to do around Outland. Many of those things require big time investments to get done and could discourage many players from making alts for example. Mm. Hey everyone, my name is Numidia and today I will give you 7 tips that will save you a lot of time in your journey through Outland. For Dude, I only follow girls. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> it's me. Make sure to follow. <laughs> Hello, it's me. From attunements to arena teams, my goal with this video is to help you save some precious time and get your objectives done quickly. With that said, okay. let's get into the video. So let's jump right into it. The first tip is about dungeon gates and attunements. In okay. TBC, every heroic dungeon requires you to be revered with a specific faction to be able to zone in, at least during phase 1 and probably phase 2. This requirement is later relaxed down to honored, but there's also 3 dungeons that even on normal mode require you to have at least one person in your group to have a key to open a gate to access them, mm -hmm. or Arbitraz, to ask Shattered or halls. wait long enough for someone else to open the Shadow gate Labs. for you. Those dungeons are Shattered Halls in Hellfire Peninsula, Shadow Shadow Labyrinth in Aukindun mm -hmm. and the Architraz in Netherstorm. I knew it. So, especially early on in the expansion when those gate keys will be very scarce, you're likely to fall in a situation where you join a group for one of those three dungeons and no one in your group has the key to open the gate. Dude, in this short. situation, there's Thanks, a man, trick you can year. do to bypass the need for a key. Simply step near the gate and get yourself killed somehow, either by aggroing a mob nearby True. or by getting on a flying mount and falling down from a high altitude. Once you're dead, run back to your corpse and simply step through the gate and then resurrect your character. Click True. the lever on the other side and voila, you just bypass the need for a key. Now. I have done this for a year and a half on my Warlock in Classic WoW uh, with every key. So, for example, uh, it's really only Skullamans. I never got the Skull key in my Warlock because I would just Hellfire and kill myself and then walk through the door. Easy. Now, to be fair, this trick is probably only going to be useful very early on when the number of players who have done this quest chain to get those keys is very low. But it's not impossible that, even way later in I'm the all, expansion, yeah, you could join yeah. a group where no one has the key. So keep this trick in mind if you're in that situation. Now obviously you might think that this is only a private server thing, but this is actually working even right now in Classic for dungeons like Strat Undead or Dire Mall Noah. You know what was a private server thing? Okay, let me show you. It's actually uh, kind of funny. Who here knows that about this? This was the case on the Phoenix servers a long time ago. So what you could do, you would log in. Let's say this is a let. Let's say this is a door, a little gate. You would sit here and you would auto run. Okay, you would auto run, and you would Alt F4 as you're auto running. And then you would reopen the door, or you would you would reopen your game, log back in, and as you're loading in, you spam uh, W and spacebar. And as you load it in, you could actually jump through doors. So you could you could do this with Ubers. You could do this with any gate. You could do this. Ah, oh, thanks. You could do this with. Um, we did it on a TPC server back in the day. You would do it in uh, set heroic Seticals. because you know the Seticals map, right? Like. Uh, after you're the boss, the door opens and it kind of puts you out at the entrance. So we would just zone in and skip right to the last boss instead of calls. Easy, dude. But there's no reason that but it wouldn't work for TBC. That doesn't work also, in classic. this does work for Karazhan too, doesn't work technically, in but at least early on, Karazhan does require you to have a key to even zone in the raid. And later on, when this requirement is removed, it's very likely that you'll have at least one person in your raid that has the key. So, yeah, not very useful for Karazhan. Tip number two. To stay in the topic of attunements, one very annoying attunement quest to do is the escort quest to get attuned to escape from Dornhold Keep. This quest starts in Caverns of Time and has you do a long escort with a very slow- Here's what you do. I'll tell you a way to do this quest without any issues at all. You transfer all of your characters to Peggle. And then you have no issue. Walking NPC. This is going to be Peggle. a big choke point for many players in TBC. 
specifically on PvP servers. You shouldn't have much issues on a PvE server if you're not PvP tagged. And everyone and their mother is required to do this quest as this not only gets you attuned to Durnhold, but doing Durnhold and Black Morass is also a requirement for the Karazhan attunement. True. So the trick here is to get this quest done ASAP. This quest is unlocked at level 66 and as soon as you hit 66 you should drop everything you're doing and go do this right away. The longer you wait the more players of the opposite faction will be gathering in Caverns of Time and the more horrible this quest will be to get done on a PvP server. On the other hand if you do this early on as soon as you hit 60 Dude this is like so fucking griefable. The, the, <laughs> griefers are gonna have so much fucking fun doing this. Like, oh man, dude. Like, you're gonna have people that sit out here like 12 hours a day just fucking with you. I I'm telling you, man. Like, all of the people that, you know, uh, like purge world buffs and classic WoW, all those motherfuckers, they're coming here and sitting here and camping here. Guaranteed. D6, there might be a handful of players, but it's safe to assume yep. that they're here for the same reason as you, which is to get this quest out of the way ASAP. Finally, tip number three in line with attunements is to avoid questing until you're honored with that faction. The reason for this is that quests give you reputation no matter your reputation level and all the way to exalted. However, normal dungeons only give reputation up to honored. The trap here is that you could, for example, do all the quests in Hellfire Peninsula, getting somewhere midway through honored, and then move on with your leveling, only to come back to do Hellfire Ramparts or Blood Furnace, for example, and find out that those dungeons give you no reputation since you're already honored from questing. And this also counts for Zangar Marsh questing and Terracar Forest and Netherstorm to a lesser extent. Of course, you're not stuck at that point. The only way you can get to Revered with those reputations is to farm Shattered Holes, Steam Vaults, Shadow Labyrinth, and Architraz respectively. Remember tip number one of this video to avoid having to do the gate key questline to enter those dungeons. But the reason Let's I said avoid questing halls. until you're honored is because the fastest way to get to Revered and unlock heroic dungeons is to farm those low level normal dungeons until honored and then do the quest in Hellfire Peninsula and Zangar. That way you're not going to miss out on the reputation that those dungeons could have given you, and you'll save a lot of time by doing them and then the quests outside. Of course, not everyone is going to do this. It's quite a sweaty trick to do, as not all of us are going to be leveling solely with dungeon groups. So, if you don't want to level by doing dungeons only, just remember that the way to get from Honor to Revered when you're out of quest- Dude, I think one of the best things about TPC is how many dungeons there are. There's like fucking 15 dungeons, man. Like, these days, if they drop a new WoW expansion, it's like, alright, 7 dungeons maybe six dungeons, right? Eight dungeons. It's just fucking more, dude. The, the, the problem is these days, and they fell into this issue with Legion when they, when they added Mythic Plus and like MDI and shit, all of the dungeons, <laughs> all of the dungeons have to be esports uh, fucking arenas, essentially, right? They have to be perfectly thought out. I mean, you know, it is, I don't know, like older dungeons, even though they're less esporty competitive, they're just more fun. It's way more fun, right? Quests is by doing Shattered Holes, Shadow Labyrinth, Architraz, and Steam Vaults respectively for each reputation. Tip number four, a quick- I think something I want to do going into TBC, and if you guys remember, I've talked about this a little bit, I was considering doing it in phase six of Classic WoW. I think the right thing to do is save it for TBC. I am going to be hosting on this channel in TBC a heroic speed run uh, competition or a league or a series of some sort where we take different five man teams and we pit them up against each other and you do you speed run heroic architraz or you speed run whatever the fuck that's on the agenda i'm gonna be fucking doing that boys it's gonna be badass okay and the great thing about it is you can have europeans and north americans race each other because i'm just gonna have them in the same discord and they just when i say go you go and i think it's gonna be really 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 fun really fun quick and easy one. One thing that you might not know is that the blue base flying mounts, the ones that cost a thousand gold to train and buy, hey, hey, only man. go as fast as 60% speed. Yep. This means that, generally speaking, unless there's an obstacle or a big pack of mobs on the way, you're better off sticking with your epic ground mount. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy a blue flying mount as soon as possible. Flying mounts are really important in Outland, as they give you access to every dungeon in Netherstorm, and as I said, Said, they're still useful if you want to go for I was thinking I think that they should give scarab lord mounts in TBC 
like bug wings that you can fly around with. Kind of like that Ravager mount you can buy on the in-game shop in Retail WoW. They should give you uh, Scareboard mounts, bug wings, and you kind of like buzz around. That that would be that would be a really good change, and I think that everyone probably could get behind that. From point A to That'd point B, sick. and you know there's an obstacle or a lot of mobs on the way. But yeah, generally speaking, it is better to stick with your 100% ground mount. Tip number five, arena teams. So TBC introduces the arena and arena teams. And if you're like me, you probably suck at PVP, but you still want to get your PVP gear as a lot of it is still very useful even in PVE and it has no rating requirements in Season 1 and Season 2. So, one way to guarantee yourself to get as much arena points as possible, even if you suck at PvP, is by deleting your arena team every week and making a new one. The number of arena points you get is... P stay safe, pay attention to this. I am paying attention to this because what I'm going to be doing is selling arena team point boosts, where I, I don't know if you can do that with the personal rating system they're going to have in TBC. It's kind of up in the air. But uh, I'll just be selling, like, hey, I'll invite you to my 2.8k arena team. You know, I'll get 2.8k fucking easy, man. You know, give me a couple thousand gold. And you get the points for the week. Easy, man. No problem. It's proportional to your mm -hmm. team's rating and your team size. Okay. The higher your rating and the bigger your team, the yeah. more points you get. So instead of letting your team's rating go down to oblivion, you could just create a new team and get back to a base 1500 rating. You need to do 10 matches every week to get arena points, no That's matter true. if you win or lose. So make sure to remake your team if you fall under 1500. Now keep in mind that making a team does have a gold cost. But assuming you're splitting the cost with your arena partners, the cost should come down to 40 gold per player, which is, in my opinion, a very fair price to pay every week. Well, if this is your strategy, you probably want to do this on a fives team, because five, like, let's say you're like with a bunch of shitters and you're shit, and you're just like remaking teams every week to get as much points. So you do it on a fives team, because five, fives gives more points than threes, right? To get a base amount of arena points awarded at the end of each week. Tip number six, another quick one, yep. the teleport to Caverns of Time in Shatrath. Many players don't know this, but in TBC, there's an NPC called Zephyr that offers you a free teleport to Caverns of Time given you're revered with the Keepers of Time. So this was added in li later, li sometime later, I don't know, 2.3 or 2.4. This was not, yeah, 2.4. It was not always there. It was in late TBC. So who knows going in uh, if we're going to have this. But yeah, at some point we will have this teleport. Yep. Now, this NPC has only been added with patch 2.4, which go. would okay. be equivalent to phase 5 in classic TBC. But yep. since TBC is based on patch 2.4, and since Blizzard did mention that they are looking at implementing some changes that will make the game better overall, I could see this one being something that they would present from phase 1. But yeah, that's just a quick tip I wanted to mention. It could or could not be present, so keep that in mind if you're revered with Keepers of Time to save you a big amount of time traveling to Tenaris. And finally, tip number seven. This one kind of has a time limit on it. It only works before the pre-patch for TBC drops. So I guess if you're watching this video after the pre-patch has dropped, you can leave now. Remember to subscribe and stuff. But for you early birds, here's how you can get every faction's mounts on any character you want Ooh. without needing to be exalted with that faction. It okay. has to do with the way the mount system changes in TBC. Okay. So, the way it works right now is that mounts are bind on use, meaning that you can trade those mounts to any player right after you buy them. But that has next to no real use, as those players still need to have that so you buy every mount now on each race, trade them to one character, and then the mount system is overhauled, and then you have every mount Oh, and animals riding skill to use the mount. However, once the pre-pass drops, the mount will then become bind on pickup. It will no longer require an animal riding skill to mount, but mm -hmm. just the typical journeyman riding skill that we all know. Meaning that by getting a player to trade you a tiger from Darnassus for- The problem is, you're doing this at a <sighs> crazy fucking markup, right? Like insane markup.
Yeah. But just the typical journeyman riding skill that we all know. Meaning that by getting a player to <clears throat> trade you a tiger from Darnassus, for example, whilst it's still bind on use before pre-patch drops, once the pre-patch does drop, you will get to use that mount and you would have bypassed the requirement to be exalted. So, to find your favorite night elf friend, give them 900 gold, and get them to trade you a tiger and enjoy your tiger once pre-patch drops. There's one more little bonus for you players who haven't bought your epic ground mount yet, or if you have an alt that hasn't. Once pre-patch drops, the game checks for your bags and your banks and automatically gives you any skill required to ride any mounts you have. Since getting an epic ground mount now requires 900 gold plus 18 gold for the skill, okay. in TBC it's 95 gold for the epic mount and 570 gold for the epic mount skill. It is 253 gold cheaper to wait for the TBC pre-patch to drop and okay. then buy your mount and the skill instead of buying those right now. But yeah, it's only 250 gold cheaper, so if you really want an mm. epic ground mount right now, you can go for it. It's not a big deal. That's all I have for today. Could you... Mm, nah, never mind. Who is that resub, dude? Boeing. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate the resub, dude. I hope this video made you learn a thing or two that you didn't know, and I hope it will help you save some time in your journey around Outland. Well, if you haven't already, is. make sure to subscribe Those to the channel, tips, as man. there will be way more videos like this that will hopefully bring you value. With that said, as always, whatever you do, remember to have fun, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. There it is. Bye for now. Upvote, boys.